Hey guys, so I wanted to talk to you about something that's been on my mind for a while. Um, and obviously it's a JW issue. Quite frankly, the story that's been on my mind is the rich man and Lazarus. It is found at Luke 16, 19 through, let me make sure I got this right, like 19 through 31, okay? So, and even in the New World Translation, you'll get um, the story. If you go a little further back, um, so Luke 15, you'll see that Jesus is speaking to, I think, to his disciples and the Pharisees. Let me make sure. I'm not quite sure if I'm right about that. He's talking to the Pharisees, but I think he is. The scribes and the Pharisees, which is what made me think about the story, you know. Um, we know that um, they've been trying to kill Jesus. They want to kill Jesus. And this story is very controversial. Not very because a lot of witnesses don't think a second thought about it but as a Jehovah Witness we're taught that this is a parable that it's just an example that is not true in the story um, the rich man goes to hell and Lazarus who was tormented in life goes to heaven to the he's taken by the angels to the bosom position of Abraham which is in other words heaven so um, in the story there, you know, the rich man is asking for a drip of water. You know, he needs just anything, just a little bit of water. Something on his tongue. Obviously, that's one of the reasons why Jehovah Witnesses believe that it's just a story. Because even if you were in a fiery torment, why would you want just a drip of water? Wouldn't you want a bucket of water, you know? Yeah, speculation. You could just he could just be asking for something, anything, even just a tiny drip. That makes sense, you know. <laughs> you know, just anything, please. Um, whether it's gonna quench his thirst or not, of course, a drip is not gonna quench his thirst. But you know, he's begging for something. Um, but of course, he's in hell, so of course, he's gonna be begging for something. And um, Abraham tells him that you know there's a chasm between the two, and that people from outside can't go to you and your people can't come here. Bam. Then he asked for um, Abraham to send people to his brothers. He had five brothers, I think. Uh, yeah, about five brothers. And Abraham tells him he has Moses and the prophets. Okay, let's um, examine the story. Not in exact detail that a lot of times the witnesses examine it. I've just been thinking about the story. I've been thinking about the fact that Jesus told this story. Um, whether it was, you know, you have to consider the fact that whether the story is true or not, if it's a story, if it was made up, that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> you, that's what lies are, made up stories. I lie to, you know, make up a story. And then um, if you go on, if you continue to read, and I obviously, you know what? I think a scripture is missing <laughs> because if you go to, I'm using the New World's translation, and I'm going to go to Luke 17, 1. And this is right after Jesus has told this fascinating story about the rich man and Lazarus. And he said, all right, he just gave this story about Lazarus, the rich man. Now he's talking about, you know, it's better to put a milestone, millstone, I'm sorry, a millstone around your neck than to stumble someone else. Stumble your brother. And to forgive your brother, even if he sins against you seven times a day, continue to forgive your brother. Okay, so I got an issue with that. And it's not probably the issue that a lot of people think about, but this is the issue. This is the thing. Like I said before, a lie is a story that is untrue, told to others. Now, he told the story to the disciples and apparently possibly in front of the Pharisees and scribes. If there was no truth to the story, one, Jesus would have lied. If there's no truth to the story, then it's a lie and Jesus has lied. That means that he could not be the perfect ransom sacrifice because now he has sinned. Two, 
if it is a lie and it is not a teaching that, G, that the Jews had heard about and was taught of or knew about, would not the Pharisees and scribes take a, take advantage of that moment where Jesus is telling this way out crazy story and use that to stone him for teaching pagan teaching? Apparently, you know they they said after life people going to heaven, people going to hell. It's a pagan teaching. So D Jesus used this pagan teaching, which, you know, is another issue. Why would Jesus use a pagan teaching when he came to set things straight? Um, it's an example. <laughs> but okay, so wouldn't they use that at time, that time to stone him? Wouldn't everyone have helped? It would have been the perfect timing for them to do it right in front of everyone because here he is. They can convict him of teaching pagan teaching to the Jews. Um, yeah, so that's my issue. You know, as a Jehovah Witness, I've always defended the fact that there's no, he you know, there's heaven, but there's, and there's, you know, hell is just the grave. But if Lazarus, I mean, if the rich man is in the, in the grave and he's talking to Abraham about, I don't know, some water and going back and helping his brothers because he don't want them to have the same fate as his. Why would Jesus teach that if it's not true? If Jesus said it and it's not true, then it's a lie. There's no way around that situation. Jesus said it, but it's not true. Going to the watchtower is not true. So therefore it's a lie. That means he's not the perfect ransom sacrifice. That means you you have no salvation. Um yeah, that was my issue. You know, I'm just like freak blew my mind kinda like how did y'all even believe that crap? But um yeah, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, have you ever thought about it that way? The fact that I'm sorry about this being shaken up all so much. But have you ever thought about it that way? You know, the fact that those witnesses teach that that is just the story. And by the way, I don't think Jesus told any other stories that weren't true. I have to do more research because right now my mind is is late. It's like 3 a.m. <laughs> but um, yeah. So yeah, Jesus never told any stories that weren't true. I remember telling people that he always used stories that were real life situations to help people understand the truth and. Here it is. We have this one story that Jesus gave. Now, if you want to say, well, maybe that story doesn't really belong in the Bible, then you're saying the Bible's tainted, and for all you know, none of the Bible's true. You can't discredit one story and say, hey, that's not true, without discrediting the whole Bible. So you can't do that. And then you want to stick to the point that, oh, well, we were taught, but what you're taught might be wrong. <laughs> anyway. What's your thoughts? Let me know. I'm out.